a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and packs. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let us give a brief little review. In the last part with this series, quite a bit of things have happened. We had our four characters, who, they were trying to manage the new world they created. In this world, in this universe, our four characters have shifted the way reality does somewhat work. And in response, the universe has pushed back against that. They created superheroes. And in response, the universe pushed back to try and rebalance the scales, creating supervillains. And ever since that happened, not only have superheroes been randomly popping up, so have supervillains. It is under the belief that the universe may be causing this. Or, it could just be that Reality Bender, he is pushing back against them. Showing them that even if they do try to create things to do good, there will always be something to do bad. Now, Deku and Katsuki. These two are now back together. And they actually are somewhat enjoying things. They're on vacation. And, well, while they have been somewhat on and off again with work... Basically using reality bending powers to check in on things, there actually is Bakugo and Izumi. These two are also being very careful with these powers. There are times they do still frequently use them, but there are also times where they are careful. The moment after they use the power for what they need to, they go back to where they are and turn off the power. Or basically just take it off. And it's strange. All four of them... They're curious about what is going on. And really, they all really need to get together and discuss a few things. But while all four of them are going through their own things, we actually will cut over to a realm. One where there is a man standing there. And in front of him, there is the giant tree. The one that just exists. The floor, it's completely black. And the tree, it's bright. It stretches beyond where you can see, into the nothingness that used to be a sky, or where the sky should be. The absence of one is strange, and the man does stand there, as somebody does come walking up behind him. You know, this place is strange. I'm well aware of that. Okay, so why are you here again? Because... This is where the narrative starts. What? The narrative. This place. Don't you wonder what this place is? I do not know. It is where creation stems from. It is where timelines are. What, what are you talking about? It's just what I say. Look over there into the distance. Him bringing his hand up and pointing. And this other version of himself does go to look around, trying to find what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. What is it? I don't see anything. Exactly. You don't see it, but I do. There's many trees. And many of them. They are odd. There's one over there. It is withering. It is decaying and it is dying. Why do you think that is? I'm not sure. I have didn't realize there was more than one until now. Exactly. There is one over there. And it is dying. It is the only one I have seen do that. Yet, the other ones, they are all lavish. They are flourishing with timelines. And that one's dead. It is dying and decaying. What does that mean? 
Again, I don't know. Can you tell me why this is important? I can't. What? <laughs> That's not possible. You know everything. I should know everything. But right now, I am concerned about a lot. It has me worried. You're worried about something. Yes, I am. And do you want to know what that is? Um, I'm pretty sure you're just going to tell me. <sighs> Never mind. It is nothing. Perhaps I'm just overreacting. I hope I am. Now, we'll actually cut over to Deku and Bakugo. These two are sitting down. And they actually have been patching things up. It's odd. The two are sitting down and eating dinner. Or at least at a diner. And after they ate, they decided to sort of have a bit of a game. And right now, Deku, he does lay down the final card. All right, and with that, I do win. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, quite. So, you do know the rules, then, correct? <laughs> of course, Bakugo. Well, I did invent this game, I do know the precautions you've taken. So, while I do get the first pick of powers, you do get the pick of the arena. Correct, correct. So, let's see. First of all, I am curious to hear the type of powers you want. Up, up, up. Nuh-uh. Because I am the winner, I get first pick. You pick the arena. But, you have to pick the arena first. It's easier that way. That way I need to know if I need those type of powers, or if we're just going to be going with street level. <laughs> All right. I was really hoping you would ask that question. After last time, I'm still a little pissed off at you. I'm sure you are. Now, somebody would come walking up. As a man has come walking up, asking the two if they are ready to close out their tab. Hmm? Of course. Uh, here you go. Deku will bring something up. And the person is somewhat surprised. Asking him if this is all hmm? well of course this is quite a lot of money but just go ahead and keep the rest i am very certain that your parents will need it hmm? uh, excuse me but th th this is too much you were having problems take the money use it don't waste it kid besides just know he will be fine but, uh, how did you... Who are you? Oh. You just call us benevolent. Uh, but... This is insane. With this amount of money, I, I could... Go ahead. Enjoy it. Have fun. The person running off. As they do just go to tell their boss to shove it and quit their job. And Bakugo, he does look at Deku. Ask him if he really thought that that was a good idea. Of course. I mean, the guy deserved it. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so your arena. What were you thinking? Hmm. Okay. A barren planet. A barren planet, so no life. Isn't that usually my pick? It is... Yes, but how about this? Me and you, a barren planet. Now, what are you picking for powers? Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Anger with strength. And... Huh. No, wait. This might take me a minute. How about the powers of the Human Torch and, hmm, no, let's see, 
You're you're making me confused for a minute. All right, take your time. It's not like we don't have till the end of the universe. Fuck off. So did you pick yet? Yes, yes. Just give me a second, dude. Jeez. Okay, let's see. I'll take the Phoenix Force, the Blades of Chaos, and I will also take the powers of a Kryptonian. Come on, really? Yes. Fine. Hmm. Okay. I'll take the powers of darkness. I'll take the strength of Atlas. And I'll also take... What's a really good weapon? Hmm. Ooh, Ripcord. Ripcord? Oh, yeah. Besides, trust me, you're gonna think this is amazing. No, wait, 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 wait. Instead of the powers of darkness, how about the powers of the devil? The powers of the devil? Come on. I mean, it's gotta sound cool, right? So, you're basically gonna be a fallen angel with a ripcord? Shut up. Now, the two, they would go to disappear and reappear on that planet. As we do actually have Deku, who he does feel his hands light, and his eyes, they immediately start to burst with flames. As you do actually have where the blades, they do appear in his hands. And Deku, he is ready. And we actually have Bakugo, who he does stand there on the planet, as a pair of wings do sprout from his back. And he does look directly at Deku, before he does go to bring his hands up and go to open his shirt, revealing there to be a cord where his heart is. And he's going to grab onto it and pull. Now, we actually cut over their counterparts. Where Izumi and Katsuki, the two were sitting down, and they have actually been somewhat talking. It is odd. They have talked about what to do and what may be happening. The way out. If it's possible to go through the super black hole, if they fly through it or even go through it, what happens? Will they just wind up somewhere else? Or will they just be spit back out? With their powers, if they're able to go through it, then perhaps they'll be okay. Right? Now, the two, they do want to go to turn their heads well, they do feel something strange. Did you feel that? I did. What was that? I'm not exactly sure. But it's a bit worrying, right? Yeah. Either the boys are fighting or something just happened. So, what do you think popped up this time? I'm not really sure. But whatever it was, it felt unnatural. That was the weirdest feeling yet, right? Yeah, I'm a little concerned. Um, where do you think that we should check first? I'd say Earth. Right, right. Um, You check that? I'll check a few other planets. Now, the two do someone start to scout, finding out what may have happened. Earth is okay, so is Mars. But a few other planets, they are also alright. But then there's actually where they do find the boys. They are fighting. And that actually is quite interesting. The two, they're going at it, and from what they can both tell, they are using some pretty strange powers. A chainsaw, and the Phoenix Force, along with those strange blades. Okay, but that's not really out of the ordinary. These two fight all the time. So, what was that? Now, 
there actually is, whenever they do, turn their heads and hear a knock. As they do get a look over. And one of them does get to stand up, walk over and open the door. And they do find a box on the ground. Huh? That's weird. Izumi going to bend down and grab it. As whenever she does so, she's going to look left and right. And whenever she does so, she's going to see a man standing at the corner. He does look surprisingly well-dressed. A red suit? And what is that? A black undershirt? And she's going to blink. Then what she does, she just watches the man is going to vanish. Huh? Now, Izumi is going to bring up her hands. Trying to rewind time in that area. However, when she does so, nothing happens. The man isn't there anymore. What the hell? Now, Izumi is going to walk back inside. And Katsuki does ask her what's wrong. As she's going to set down this strange box? Um, that's weird. What happened? I... I'm not exactly sure, but someone left this there, and I saw someone, but my powers didn't work on them. That's not possible. Right? He was there one second, then he was gone. I tried to turn back the clock, but he was still gone. Okay, that's pretty bad. What do you think happened? I'm not sure. Do you think that we should call them? Um, how about we give it a few? Let them finish up their fights. Now, we do cut over that planet. Where Bakugo, he actually is using the chainsaws. And Deku, he actually is using the Blaze of Chaos to hold off Bakugo. Bakugo swinging wildly, and he's going to bring down both of his arms down towards Deku. Using the strength of Alice to make Deku somewhat crack into the ground and the planet shake a bit. As the chainsaws, they're revving. And Bakugo is going to throw the third one on his head downwards and towards Deku. And Deku is holding the blades cross-styled. As three chainsaws are trying to rev their way and cut through the weapons. And Deku, he is holding himself there. As Bakugo does tell Deku that he does need just give up. Deku, he does just start taking a deep breath. Before blowing out cold wind, directly at Bakugo. And Bakugo, he actually does have his equipment freeze up. As whenever that does happen, Deku, he does go to directly throw the blades over and across. Cutting through the chainsaws as Bakugo, he actually has to retract them. And he actually has to somewhat stumble backwards before going to break up his hands. And using Hell Flames to try and throw them directly at Deku. And Deku, he does just go to bring his hands backwards and clap. As the moment he does, a shockwave is sent throughout the entire planet. And Bakugo, he is sent flying backwards. Him actually going to directly dig his hand into the ground and trying to stop himself from flying backwards. As whenever he actually is able to stop himself, he is going to fly forwards, directly towards Deku. And Deku is going to fly forwards himself. As when the two do finally meet, they do collide in a punch. And let me just say one thing. The strength of Atlas and the strength of a Kryptonian a man who can hold up a planet and the man who can punch with the force to destroy a planet. Well, that is something that does create quite the shockwave. And they basically do push the planet out of orbit, or at the very least off of its axis, and a bit away from its star, or they send it hurling towards the star. So, for the sake of it, the planet is basically fucked. And the two do continue. And they actually are trying to have a bit of a punching match. And it is actually very insane. Deku and Bakugo, they are going at it. They've basically abandoned their weapons. And the two are having a punching match as the planet. It's being torn apart by gravity. And the two, they eventually do have to somewhat stop their fight. Since whenever the planet is pulled into the sun, they are teleported away. And the two, they do somewhat go flying downwards and directly smashing into the ground. And they do go to look around. Huh? So that was my win. Fuck off, that was my win. Okay, you two need to stop. Oh, uh, hey guys. Was that you two? Yes, it was. 
And I'm assuming you two didn't think about what was going to be happening. Hmm? What do you mean? Okay. Well, while you two were playing your punching match, me and Izumi were talking. And we found something very strange. Now, the two do go to power down. And Robocco does have the giant chains on his head so it won't retract and return to normal. Izumi, she just goes somewhat step forwards, telling Bakugo about what happened. The man outside disappeared, and she couldn't track him, nor could she find him with her powers. So what exactly does that mean? And Bakugo, he is somewhat surprised. Somebody they can't track. But that doesn't make sense. Um... What was he... What did he look like? Are you sure it wasn't just a counterpart? You see, that's the thing. He didn't look like any of us. He was just a man in red. Wait, what? Now, Izuku does stare to get his counterpart. And everybody do have their eyes on him. What do you mean he was just a man in red? A red suit? A tie? Oh, what, what was he doing? He was wearing a suit. And he did have a tie. Do you know who this guy is? No, I've seen him before. I saw him a long time ago, but... Uh, okay. I need to describe him a bit more. I didn't get a good look at him. But... Wherever he... Whatever he is... We can't find him. But... You've seen him. Where? I saw him in many places. Whenever... Me and Katsuki were... Um... In our last world. The one before this one. But if that's the case, then... He jumped to this reality with us, didn't he? Wait, wait, hang on. Are you saying that we're running into another counterpart? One that's going through something that we're going through? I'm not sure, but... If this man in red... If he's doing that... If he's following us, then... Wait a minute. Has anyone else had an experience like this? Or is it just me? I'm not sure. I think I have had an experience with somebody in red, but they weren't a man. Okay, that's a bit better, but if that's the case, then what do we do about this? I don't know. But if he was really all that bad, wouldn't we know? Yeah, about that. He left this box for us. Now, all of them will go to turn. And surprise, surprise, it is a red gift box. And they're not too sure what to even really say about it. The box is strange. And there's this feeling coming off of it. This feeling, it doesn't make sense. It almost feels like they're not supposed to be able to look at it, be able to see it. And there actually is where Bakugo, he does his step forwards, reaching his hand out towards the box. And he does get to grab onto it and pull the top off. As the moment he does, they all vanish. And there actually is over with Reality Bender. Him and everybody else were watching. They were concerned. They were wondering what was going on. These four are talking about a man in red. But Reality Bender, he can't track this man. There's somebody he does see. Somebody that he's staring at. But he can't tell who they are. The man, he does exist in this reality, this timeline, but... That's just it. By all accounts, he is just a well-dressed man. And these four... He can't find them. And the others, they do hear about that. 
he can't find them. Wherever they are, they're not in that reality anymore. In fact, he doesn't even believe they even exist anymore. And that is concerning. And Reality Bender, he does go to look around. And everybody there are a bit confused. Where did they go? I, I can't find them. I can't see them. Where are they? I'm not sure. Okay. What do you think is going on? I don't know. I have my suspicions, however. And I... I think I know what's going on. What's going on? Hmm. I believe they found the being I'm looking for. The being? Yes. What I can't say for certain. Now, we actually do cut over to Izuku. Who he does get someone to jump up. And whenever he does so, he actually does go look around. He feels like he just woke up from a nightmare. He's sweating and things don't feel right. But he does get a look. He's in his room. But this doesn't make sense. His room. It, it's almost like how he remembers it, but it smells off. It smells different. Izuku, dinner's ready. Now, Deku does gonna freeze hearing that. And he does just think for a second. Mom? Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.